Uh, so our next speaker is going to be Wei Zhu, uh, who is uh, an, ass uh, an assistant scientist at the Center for Demography of Health and Aging at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And he's going to speak on racial ethnic estimates of dementia prevalence and spatiotemporal clustering of dementia mortality in the United States. And that'll be an excellent follow-up to, to the first presentation. And I think we'll keep, keep everybody uh, excited on all the new things they are learning. Uh, Wei Xu, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, let me quickly share my slides. <clears throat> okay, uh, my name is Wei Xu. I am an assistant scientist at the Center for Demography of Health and Aging at the University of Medicine, uh, Wisconsin Medicine. Uh, I'm very honored to join this group of speakers today and uh, share with you some of the research on, on dementia disparities related to race, ethnicity, and geography in the US. <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about two studies we recently published on estimating racial ethnic prevalence, dementia prevalence and uh, detecting spatial temporal clusters of dementia mortality in the US. So just to provide a little background, the US population is aging rapidly and its racial ethnic profile is becoming increasingly diverse. Uh, some studies have estimated that by 2045, the US will become a majority minority nation, which means that the combination of racial and ethnic minorities will surpass the non-Hispanic white population. By 2060, we would expect a 75% increase for non-Hispanic white population. But for minorities, the percentage increase is expected to range from 172% for African-Americans to almost 400% for Hispanics. Also, a large body of research has documented the racial ethnic inequalities in many aspects related to ADRD. We know that certain racial and ethnic minorities, particularly African-Americans and Hispanics, have higher ADRD incidence and prevalence. They also spend longer years of their lives with the diseases. Many health conditions that are risk factors of dementias, including heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, are more prevalent among racial and ethnic minorities. And finally, there are significant inequalities in dementia diagnosis, treatment, and care. Racial and ethnic minorities are less likely to know their dementia status and are less likely to use anti-dementia medication. So the expectation of demographic shifts coupled with racial ethnic inequalities in many aspects of dementia creates a very unique challenge for the national and the local public health agencies in terms of how to develop effective strategies for dementia prevention, intervention, and the care planning for an increasingly diverse population. The Healthy Brain Initiative launched by the CDC in partner with Alzheimer's Association has made several recommendations for federal and local public health agencies that explicitly address racial and ethnic inequalities in ADRD. These recommendations include uh, emphasize the need to promote culturally appropriate strategies for increasing public awareness about dementia, to promote strategies about effective communication with persons with dementia and their families, to support policy development and uh, partnerships that specifically account for disease burdens in minority groups and the disparities in ADRD burdens among different uh, racial and ethnic groups. He also highlights the need for a culturally competent workforce so that dementia can be recognized and diagnosed early despite cultural differences. 
and the persons with dementia can better support it in navigating the healthcare system. And finally, it is also critical to define the needs of a diverse group of caregivers and persons with dementia. To implement these recommendations, it would be helpful for us to know how much dementia burden we should, we should anticipate for different racial and ethnic groups. And such estimate did not exist previously. So our objectives of this study were to estimate current and future racial ethnic prevalence of ADRD and to update previous projections of ADRD prevalence in the US. The data we use came from Medicare claims data. So in 2014, over 43 million Americans aged 65 years and older were enrolled in Medicare Part A or, P or B programs. And among those, 28 million were enrolled in the traditional Medicare fee service programs, and over 15 million were enrolled in Medicare Advantage programs. So these are the programs offered by private companies approved by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Because claims for enrollees in MA plans are not reported to the CMS, we used claims data for 100% of the Medicare fee for service population. And uh, in 2014, the sample included over 28 million Medicare beneficiaries and they accounted for over 60% of older adults in the US. Our estimation approach includes two steps. First, we estimated ADRD prevalence among fee for service beneficiaries. And we, we identified uh, persons with ADRD by looking at their claims data. If there is at least one claim indicating that the person received a service or treatment for ADRD, then we identify this benef beneficiary uh, as diagnosed with ADRD. So we estimated the prevalence as expressed as the percentage of uh, beneficiaries with ADRD for each of the 70 subgroups defined by sex, age, race, and ethnicity. So for future projections, we applied the subgroup specific prevalence in 2014 to annual subgroup specific populations, data between 2014 uh, to 2060. One of the issues we ran into was that the racial categories in Medicare claims data and the census population data were not consistent. This graph shows the, the approach we used for creating census CMS combined racial categories. Because Medicare data uh, does not have the two or more races category, to arrive at these estimations, we applied the age sex specific prevalence for all races to the total census population of two or more races. So this table shows the number of fee service beneficiaries and the number of beneficiaries diagnosed with ADRD in different population groups. Overall, 11.5% of fee service beneficiaries were diagnosed with ADRD in 2014. The prevalence was higher in women than in men. The prevalence increased exponentially with age. Among different racial and ethnic groups, African-Americans had the highest prevalence at 14.7%, followed by Hispanics and non-Hispanic whites. Asians and Pacific Islanders had the lowest prevalence if we do not consider persons with other or missing races. These two figures shows uh, show the racial ethnic ADRD prevalence in 2014 by age and sex. We can see that African Amer Americans and Hispanics had the highest prevalence across all age groups. Over 40% of African Americans and Hispanics over the age 
85 uh, had ADRD, which is very high. And similarly, African Americans and, Hisp and Hispanics had the highest ADRD prevalence in both male and female. Overall, we estimated that 5 million, which is about 10.9% of US older adults were diagnosed with ADRD in 2014. Among racial and ethnic groups, African Americans and, His and Hispanics had the highest prevalence, while Asians and Pacific Islanders had the lowest prevalence. Uh, by 2060, we projected that the number of US older adults with ADRD will reach 13.9 million, which is a 178% increase from the number in 2014. The number of ADRD cases will increase by 90% among non-Hispanic whites. The percentage increase will be 280% among African-Americans and 650% uh, among Hispanics. Uh, in 2014, there were approximately 2 million ADRD cases estimated in each of the two oldest age groups. Beginning around uh, 2030, the growth in the number of cases in the in the oldest age group will begin to outpace those in the 75 to 84 years age group. And given the population size relative to other uh, racial and ethnic subgroups, the non-Hispanic white population will have the largest total number of ADRD in all years. As the United States becomes a majority minority nation by 2050, increases in the number of non-Hispanic whites with ADRD will begin to plateau around 2040, while the number of in minor in minority populations will continue to grow, uh, particularly among Hispanics. So in summary, we estimated that 5 million adults aged 65 years and older were diagnosed with ADRD. African-Americans and Hispanics had the highest prevalence while Asians and Pacific Islanders had the lowest prevalence. By 2060, 13.9 million Americans are projected to have ADRD. And over time, we uh, expect greater increase in ADRD cases among Hispanics and African-Americans by 2060. So here I'd like to acknowledge my uh, awesome collaborators at the CDC on this particular project. Uh, the second study I'm gonna be talking about examines ADRD disparities in the US from a geographic perspective. Uh, so there is a paradigm shift within public health in recent years, which draws attention to more upstream and structural factors and places an increasing emphasis on the social determinants of health. Empirical studies have linked many of these social determinants to ADRD, including education, material deprivation, access to healthcare, and the character characteristics of our social and built environments. We know that many of these social determinants of health and dementias in particular are not distributed evenly across the US. This set of maps show the geographic disparities in some of the social determinants, including area poverty level, community social cohesion, air pollution, and access to healthcare. And it is clear that certain regions bear a cluster uh, of, a, of disadvantage. So from this geographic perspective, a question uh, to ask is how does dementia risk, whether it be prevalence, incidence, or mortality, vary across space and time? A few 
uh, previous studies have looked at the geographic disparities in ADRD prevalence and incidence within the US. They found that uh, there were considerable differences in these outcomes across geographic regions. We see that areas in the South and Appalachia region appear to have higher prevalence, a uh, dementia prevalence and incidence compared to the rest of the nation. Uh, however, these studies are limited by the fact that the patterns are either based on very coarse spatial resolution or very short periods of, the of time. So the two studies I uh, cited here are both based on one-year data. Uh, an important question with every disease map is whether the geographic patterns we see is due to random fluctuations, as by pure chance, there will always be some areas with more cases than others, or whether the map reflects the true underlying geographic variations in disease risk. So our study uses advanced spatial stati statistical methods to detect clusters of dimension, dimension mortality in the US. And specifically, we asked, were there any significant spatial temporal clusters of dementia mortality in the US during the decade of 2000 and the 2010 that are not due to random chance? And if so, where and when did they occur? What were the differential risks associated with these clusters? Uh, we hope our results uh, can be used for for providing clues for generating etiological hypotheses on dementia risk factors that are linked to geography, and also to inform dementia care, especially end-of-life care planning and the delivery that are consistent with local needs and, and circumstances. The data we used include, uh, included the three components the first one is the case file. We used nationwide individual death certificates between 2000 and uh, 2010. The geography of those death certificates was accurate to county. We extracted records of death from AD and ADRD as either the underlying cause of death or one of the multiple causes of death. Also, basic demographic variables, including sex, race, ethnicity, and age of the decedents were also extracted. The second component is the population file. The population file helps us to es estimate how many cases we should expect if the risk is distributed evenly across space and the time after accounting for the demographic structures of the underlying populations. And the third component is the coordinates file. We used 2010 county shape files and the latitude and longitude of county centroids to indicate county localities. So the coordinates file help us to determine the connectivity between counties in the cluster detection process. We used retrospective space-time scan statistic uh, for cluster detection. So this scan st statistic identifies clusters by imposing a series of cylindrical windows as candidate clusters. The circular bases of the windows are centered at county polygon centroids. The circular base of a window represents the spatial extent of the potential cluster, while the height represents the time, time interval. The radius of the circular base continuously increases until the window reaches the maximum spatial cluster size, and the height also increases until it reaches the maximum temporal cluster size. So here in our study, we restrained the maximum spatial cluster size to 500 
kilometers, and uh, the maximum temporal si uh, cluster size to five years. We also adjusted the age, age, race, ethnicity, and the sex of the cases and underlying populations, and also the overall temporal trend. We replicated this process for 999 times to ensure the statistical stability of our results. We applied two measures to our clusters. The first one is relative risk. This measure measures the how different the risk in a cluster is compared to the rest of the to the rest of the country. The second measure is the likelihood ratio, which measures how likely the detected cluster it is a true uh, is a true cluster. So here I'm going to present the cluster detection results. Figure A shows the high and low risk clusters of death from AD as the underlying cause. The cluster with the highest relative risk of dementia mortality was located in the Pacific Northwest, including in states of Washington, Oregon, and uh, West Idaho. Uh, there are also a few low risk clusters. They were in New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, part of Nevada and Utah, and the Southern Texas and Florida. The clusters of Alzheimer's disease as a multiple cause, cause of death were uh, very similar to those we found for AD as the underlying cause of death. And if we look at all cause dementia as a multiple cause of death, which is figure D, the cluster with the highest relative risk was also located in the uh, Pacific Northwest. However, the area Compassing Louisiana and part of Mississippi and Alabama appeared to be a new low risk cluster. So, in this table, we presented the most likely clusters ranked by their likelihood ratio. So the area of New York and New Jersey is the most likely cluster of either AD or all cause dementia as either the underlying cause or one of the multiple causes of death. It is a low risk cluster. Persons in this area were 40 to 60% less likely to die from Alzheimer's disease or all cause dementia. The most likely High risk cluster is the Ohio River Valley and the Carolinas. This is a large region comprising much of Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Georgia. Persons in this area were 30 to 40% more likely to die from AD or, or cause dementia compared to the rest of the country. Also, uh, Northern Texas and Central California had a similar levels of relative risk. Another interesting observation uh, of these highly likely clusters is that most of the high risk clusters occurred in the first half of the decade, while the low risk clusters occurred in the second half. Uh, the results suggest that the relative risk in those highly likely clusters listed in this table declined over the decade. Given that men and women have a very different risk of ADRD, we also detected the clusters stratified by sex. Uh, the locations and the relative risks of the most likely clusters are quite similar between men and women. And they are consistent with those we find for the total population. So still, the area of New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania were the most likely low-risk cluster for both men and women. However, the order of the, 
of the secondary clusters uh, are a bit different. So in summary, our results indicated that dimension mortality risk was not shared evenly across space and time. Uh, Ohio River Valley and the surrounding areas, Pacific Southwest and the Central California were the most significant high-risk clusters. Well, New York, New Jersey region, and the South Florida were the most significant low-risk clusters. The relative risks of, all, of Alzheimer's disease or all-cause dementia mortality in those highly likely clusters areas decreased over time. And we also found very similar cluster patterns by sex. So although uh, our study does not address the causes of the clusters, uh, the results are suggestive that demographic structures of local populations do not explain the geographic disparities in dementia mortality and that other factors, whether it be genetics, behavioral, or environmental factors may be uh, at play here. Perhaps more importantly, our study can inform the organization and the delivery of healthcare resources related to dementias. Uh, we should evaluate the capacities of local health care systems. For example, Medicare workforce competent for treating persons with dementia, the, compa the capacity of, of long-term care facilities so that patient needs before death can be better supported in those high-risk cluster areas. Moreover, as many dementia patients die from home, it is also critical for policymakers to evaluate the care gaps at those non-institutional care settings and uh, develop programs providing coping strategies and supporting resources for informal caregivers. So that is the end of my presentation. And I think we still have a few minutes left for questions and the discussions. Thank you for your attention. Um, okay, hi, this is Eric, I'm back again. Uh, there was one, one question that's in, I think we can handle that. And then if there's follow-up questions, we'll take care of those in the last 15, in the last 15 minutes of the, of the presentation. So the question that's in, or the question that was sent in uh, as a typed question, would your approach to risk, would your approach risk to conflate COVID related mortality clusters in nursing homes say with AD related mortality if COVID's contribution was not well coded in ME data or death certificates, medical encounter data or death certificates. And if you want to answer that now or if you want to defer either way, I'll let that be your choice. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna answer the question now. Uh, so for cluster detection, project, our study period was between 2000 and 2010. So that was way before the uh, COVID pandemic happened. Uh, I think the implication, the question posed was that there, there were competing risk, risks of mortality from different causes. And in our study, we identified cases from uh, using both Alzheimer's disease or dementia as the underlying cause of death, which is the single disease that directly contributed to the death. And also Alzheimer's disease and the dementia as one of the multiple causes of death. So dementia, Alzheimer's disease or dementia may not directly contribute to mortality, but these diseases are a contributing factor. So it is a way to uh, kind of mitigate the issue that many deaths of people with dementia are not, direct, are not directly uh, contributed by
by Alzheimer's disease or other related dementias. Good. Okay. Uh, I have some questions that I, I will ask during the, the um, uh, general questioning period. So I want to thank you for that very interesting and informative and exciting presentation.